Greetings, my name is Jay Stanford, and I work at the City of London. In the next five minutes, I plan on providing a brief overview of London's draft climate emergency action plan. There was a time when photographs like this on the screen were in other parts of the world, but these are right here at home in Canada from 2021. A lot of devastating situations due to severe weather and climate change. Closer to home, let's face it, we see river flooding. Winter, February 2018, not a normal time for flooding. This is at the Forks of the Thames and Harris Park area. The next year, August 2019, flash flooding, and this is on Queen's Ave. Wind storms appear to be on the increase. Trees down August 2020, and again in 2021, both in July and September, causing significant damage to vehicles and homes. Other things that are suggesting that climate is changing. Uh, we have an increase of Lyme disease and the area of London two years ago was not on the map. Now we're listed as an area that is in the risk area for ticks. Pests and invasive species are on the increase here in London and in southwestern Ontario. All signs of a change in climate, why we should care. Community greenhouse gas emissions we measure every year. A couple notable points. The red area on the bar chart that is how we move and how we live in London. So about 50% of our emissions are from that sector, you and I. The blue area is our commercial, industrial and institutional sector, about 35% of our emissions. About, oh, almost two years ago now, we started our public engagement process to develop the Climate Emergency Action Plan. We heard from many Londoners and we plan on hearing from many more as we develop and implement. Most important though, was we chatted with other municipalities who are going down the same path here in Canada. We have about 12 peer uh, municipalities in Ontario and another five or six outside of Ontario that we frequently chat with and compare notes. We landed on three major goals for our plan, net zero emissions by 2050, which was actually a council priority established in 2019, improved resilience to handle, of course, that climate change and bring everyone along, most important, goal, I believe anyways. We all need to be involved in this. As we look at milestone targets on the way to 2050, we're proposing to establish them for 2030, 35, and 40, so we can chart our progress. We're going to actually chart our progress on an uh, annual basis, but when we look at a key area, 2030, that's about eight, nine years from now, we've got a lot of heavy lifting to do, about a million tons, perhaps a little bit more, of greenhouse gas has to be reduced in London per year. To do that though, we've identified 10 areas of focus and have established implementation work plans for each one. Now these areas all tackle our major greenhouse gas sectors that you saw on the previous slide and focus on engagement, in particular, engaging, inspiring and learning from people. We also have roles for businesses, employees and academia, university, college, and of course into the school boards. Very key to be creating the next generation of people who are even more climate wise than we are today. Throughout the work plans, community engagement is threaded. It is a key part of all the programs. We need to hear from people. When we launch all the work plans, the idea was let's get everything out of the gate at the same time so we can have everyone moving in a similar or same direction. We believe that will be achieved in this particular plan. There is room for everyone to participate and take action. Especially the business community. We believe there's opportunities for jobs, growing new companies, changing business models, looking at new and emerging technologies, and of course, solutions. As we look at the household level, well, on average, about 10 and a half tons of greenhouse gas is emitted per year. Two categories, gasoline, how we move, and natural gas, how we cool and heat our homes, are the number two items from an energy consumption perspective, which create greenhouse gases. Households, though, have a choice on how they will reduce their fair share. Some households generate more greenhouse gas than others. Therefore, there will be an expectation. If you generate more, you're gonna to have to work harder and make even more challenging decisions as you move forward. In the early go, we believe many of these items can be done with just a little bit of hard work by rolling up your sleeves. 
Of course, we want to hear from you. And if you want to learn a lot more, please go to Get Involved London. Thanks very much. <laughs>